Tracy Hanbury and welcome to another edition of Landlord Investment Hour. We're here today in London um, on an autumn day which is now brightened up thank goodness in preparation for our old Billingsgate show tomorrow. Um, so I'm very very pleased to say that I'm joined with Accuracy Professional um, which is a multidisciplinary advisory firm and I will actually be speaking with various amounts of the team from Accuracy today to find out exactly what it is they do and how they can help you. Um, so Phil, this is Phil Bryant, who is Head of Financial Planning. So welcome today, Phil. Thanks Hi, very Tracy. much for joining us. You're very welcome. It's nice to be here. Excellent. So obviously you guys have done our shows quite a few times and exhibited with us. So some, you know, some of our audience may be familiar with you, but I think Obviously, the multidisciplinary advisory firm seems like you do quite a lot to help landlords and investors. So, could you tell us, Phil, in your own sort of words, um, you know, briefly, what Acuity professionally, you know, professional does, please? Certainly. Um, so, multidisciplinary advisory firm is a bit of a mouthful, um, but essentially, what it means is um, we do a lot of work for our accountancy clients, and the main lifeblood of our business is our accountancy function, and we've got about six thousand accountancy clients. The majority of those are owner-manager SME clients. Um, I'm head of the financial planning division at Acuity and I have a mortgage team, I have uh, a financial planning wealth management team, I have a final salary DB analysis team and a tax planning team. And then we work very closely with our tax planning and our corporate planning department and their primary um, uh, demographic is the portfolio landlord community and we've got about two and a half thousand portfolio landlord clients and we do uh, a lot of tax planning a lot of financial planning a lot of mortgage work a lot of estate planning and generally look to try and pull together all the different areas of financial professional advice under under one roof and have a round table approach to uh, professional advice okay fantastic so Obviously, um, you know, tax is a major, major thing for landlords and investors, and obviously we're a complete, ever-changing landscape of everything, and in every sense with it, with property sector and, um, you know, everything that's going on. I mean, in terms of, you know, what I feel, some great questions today which might benefit our database. I mean, question one is really, with the rising cost of lending and concerns um, surrounding future property values, what options are there for landlords concerned about their strategy, in particular their CGT liability? Yep, very, very good question, very relevant question. Um, landlords have been uh, in the very fortunate position, I think, over the last kind of 10 plus years to be in a very low interest rate environment. And um, unfortunately, that's not the norm. It's become the norm, mm. and people have been treating it as the norm. But if you look back historically, the rates of interest have been 18% um, at their highest. So I think it was inevitable at some point that interest rates were going to come back. Uh, I don't think people envisage them coming back quite so aggressively yeah. and quite so quickly. Uh, and hopefully now uh, there is a little bit more uh, of a settled feel in government, which uh, might well have the effect of just calming down those bond markets. And that's what caused a lot of the volatility with the interest rate market. So I, I think there's a, a, a general consensus that interest rates are gonna probably go up uh, on the third, mm. but maybe not as much as people once feared. But what that means for our professional landlord clients is that they have to just work as hard as possible about being as efficient and effective as possible from a tax planning uh, point of view because they need to um, make the financial modelling work in an environment where the cost of lending is getting higher mm. uh, and in terms of CGT as you quite rightly raise a lot of people are holding quite significant CGT liabilities because they've held these properties for a significant period mm. of time and one would normally look at that and say an option is maybe to sell 
but it's not as attractive when you're carrying a significant tax liability for that sale. So we tend to do a lot of work with our landlord community about structures and implementing structures which actually address those taxation liabilities in, a, in an effective, efficient way mm. to enable them to have the option of sale, should they wish to, without that associated CGT liability. So it just affords them that flexibility of choice. Okay, fantastic. I mean, you know, obviously there's two quite different ends of the spectrum here in terms of you've got the, um, you know, people trying to get into, get on the ladder into the buy-to-let market, and then you've got your established sort of portfolio landlords um, that will obviously be a lot more geared up and hopefully, you know, a bit more experienced in that. But, I mean, what, what sort of advice would you give somebody now that's, um, you know, maybe on one or two sort of properties in terms of, you know, do they hold tight if they're wanting to, you know, maybe refinance at the moment or do they just sit back and wait to see what's gonna, gonna, gonna happen really? Yes, it's very interesting. I think um, if I was in that position, I'd want to try and secure my lending sooner rather yeah. than later. Uh, I think we'll probably see the, uh, maybe not necessarily the highest point, but I think we'll see a, a somewhat of a peak, uh, quarter two, end of quarter two, start of quarter three next year if we see Bank of England base rate being around about 5%, currently the average buy-to-let mortgage that we're seeing is, is north of 6%, 7% in some yeah. instances, and residentials are moving up pretty close to that. And the Bank of England base rate is not even at three. So yeah. I would want to secure my lending sooner rather than later. I think there's gonna be some opportunities in the property sector next year, mm. um, because people are unfortunately going to be forced to probably uh, take yeah. a change of stance depending on what their situation is. So there's potentially some opportunity if you've got some capital, but I'd, I'd be conscious uh, and if I could avoid to kind of fully leverage the 75%, I would try and hold back slightly on that to give myself a little bit of headroom. Yeah, okay, that's, that's great advice. Thank you very much, Phil. So we'll be sort of joined by Phil a little bit later on. Um, I'm going to be now speaking to our next guest, which will be Joe Haggerty um, from Acuity. So we'll be joined by Joe very shortly now, but we'll be speaking to Phil at the end here again. Cheers. Thank you. So I'm now joined by Joe Haggerty, who is mortgage advisor from Acuity. Um, so welcome, Joe. Hello, good to be here. Thank you very much. So we've just been speaking to Phil and obviously covered quite a lot in terms of um, you know, what the Acuity brand is in terms of a multidisciplinary advisory firm and a sort of sort of turnkey solution from one from the very first step to the last step is from you know what your services entail. So one of the questions that I had for Phil was, you know, with the rising cost of lending and concerns surrounding property values, but I think from the mortgage lender point of view or advisor point of view, um, the question that I thought would be helpful to our viewers is uh, what are the mortgage implications of converting to a more formal corporate property structure and you know, what are your views about the refinancing before a fixed term mortgage? Oh, good question. So lending in a limited company is, is, is very similar to lending in your own name. Uh, you know, it achieves the same outcome. You'll, the, the rates, there's an argument that the rates are a little bit higher for limited company lending. And, you know, I mean, that, well, it's true. But when you're talking about portfolio landlords, that it makes sense to have your borrowing in a limited company, the rates available to them tend to be a bit higher anyway, because they start to have to use specialist lenders. Mm. Maybe they've got specialist properties. Um, so quite similar there. It's often the case, depending on what tax bracket you're in, that you can afford to borrow more based on the rent of a property within a limited company. So the rental coverage doesn't need to be quite as high as it would if it was in your own name, which can be the difference, especially now with, um, you know, with interest rates getting higher. Yeah. Uh, that's impacted the affordability for a lot of rental properties. So it's, it's helpful to have a lower coverage requirement there. Okay, fantastic. I mean, mm. obviously with everything going on at the moment, I think, um, you know, I've certainly um, had, had people that have sort of come to us or we talk about it amongst them, you know, some people that were just going through that sort of mortgage process, that refinance process, you know, products have been pulled off the market for obvious reasons from certain lenders. I mean, have you found that that's had a huge impact on, on, on you know, on the services that you can offer? It's, well, yes, it, it, it made borrowers' lives a little bit more challenging or, or, or even a bit nervous, I suppose, um, made a good mortgage broker quite invaluable, I think, mm. 
you know, as, as best as they can, lenders will give us advance notice of when they're going to pull products and say, okay, you know, if you want to have any of these product range that they've been promoting for however long, you need to have the application in by, say, 8 p.m. tonight, for example, yeah. which can be a bit of a tall order, but, you know, at, at least they give you some notice. Um, that has calmed down a little bit. But there's still the requirement to sort of be Johnny on the spot when you see a, yeah. you know, when you're ready to go, basically, you've either got the property that you want to buy or the remortgage, you know, the, sitting on your hands is is probably not advisable at the moment, right, for sure. Okay. It's just, yeah, take action quickly. Mm. Um, and then it's obviously going back to, you know, co the, you know, converting to a limited company. I mean, how easy can you help people do that, you know, that, that aren't that limited company at the moment? where the properties are owned in the personal yeah, name today yeah, and they want to move it in there limited, yeah. well uh, yeah for fairly easily really there's a there's uh, not every there's not one solution for everybody um, you know generally speaking you'll need to meet, have a certain number of properties to be able to transfer into a limited company without it becoming quite a costly exercise with, yeah. with stamp duty and capital gains tax um, I, I think I'm not sure, but I think one of my other colleagues might have that question coming okay, up for them. Fantastic. So I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. I want to. I want to give them the chance to speak. But um, but you know, suffice to say, there are definitely ways to do it, and uh, you know, we've done it for about four thousand clients, I think. Um, so yeah. Okay, fantastic. And then, I mean, in terms of obviously advice from sort of. Um, you know, I know you can't obviously pick out one particular product, but you know, if it was somebody that's sort of new, maybe one to sort of two. Um, properties at the moment, your advice would be what to hold tight, or just to sort of, if they're looking now to refinance, to to make that move now, or to sort of sit back and wait for a little while. Uh, again, this would be a case by case thing. Do you mean if they're sort of within a fixed product yes. period? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Can you ask that before? Didn't we? And we didn't get onto it. So, not all early repayment costs are equal. Mm. So, you, but we can effectively model it and say, okay, it will cost you this much to break this loan, which means that interest rate rates would have to get, you know, say this, you know, half a percent or a percent higher within the next X number of years before um, it becomes a bad idea or a good idea to have okay. broken the fixed rate in the first place. Um, you know, there are definitely people doing it. It's quite a topical question. Mm. You, you know, if, if, if someone, and, and I think some people have, you know, clients of ours have done the right thing in hindsight. They didn't know they were doing the right, you know, they, yeah. they were kind of um, making an educated guess or, you know, it's a bit, they didn't have a crystal ball. Yeah, of course. But, you know, coming out of a, of a low cost fixed rate, paying the associated break cost and fixing at a rate which is nowhere, it, it, you know, is, is much lower than what they can get now. And they're still fixed. They still would have been fixed now. So I don't know if that's that's talking around in circles, but it's um, okay. there's you, you can look at um, the merits of each case and decide whether it's worth doing. Sure, mm. and obviously, you know, being the, uh, more, one of the mortgage advisors in house, then I guess every every person that comes to you has got a very different scenario anyway, because you're mm. going to have people that might have the one to two to three properties, and you've obviously got people that have already you know in the limited company. So I guess every client that you serve has a very different need anyway so I guess from that point of view um, you know Acuity can offer the you know really good mortgage advice and mm. find the right product the right solution for that client you know at whatever situation that they're in at that time. Definitely and and that's it's probably a good point to make actually is that there's a lot of buzz about limited companies and there has been for a few years and they are fantastic when they you know when it makes sense for someone but they definitely don't make sense for everybody. Mm. You know, uh, someone who's paying the basic rate of tax when inclusive of their rent and is not likely to dramatically increase that in the short term uh, would probably be better off starting out just buying the old fashioned way in their own name. Yeah. You know, they're not going to have any any extra benefits um, for buying an limited company. Yeah. So, yeah, it's worth doing the research and asking uh, a good mortgage advisor or tax specialist or both yeah. before making the purchase if they're okay, just starting fantastic. out. So obviously that's something that Acuity can offer in-house as well as part of their solution um, to landlords and investors is 
obviously um, in their multi multidisciplinary advisory firm is, is mortgages are one of their key aspects. So thank you so much, Joe, for joining us today. I think I'm I'm now it's been a it's going to be a busy interview. There's an, and now I'm going to be meeting um, Stuart Davidson, um, you know, and I've got some other questions for him and to find out obviously what his speciality is within the within the firm but thank you so much for joining us today and um, enjoy the show tomorrow my pleasure thank you cheers Bye. so welcome back i'm now joined with um stuart davidson who is a senior um tax and financial planner at acuity yeah. so i believe you've been with acuity for around two years I have, so yes. far. yeah so it's, I've, I've been in the industry since 97 um but yeah recently moved to uh to take up a position at Acuity, um, and obviously you know, it, it's broadened horizons from what I was doing previously to, to what I'm doing now. Okay, fantastic. So, obviously, I've put together numerous questions today for various parts of the team. Yeah. And what I thought would be, um, you know, quite relevant fit for your awful speciality is. Um, so question number three, uh, there is often a division between those who believe that property is the best long-term invest investment um, answer and those who prefer to look at two other investments. You know, what really is the best solution, especially in a time of uncertainty, uncertainty in the investment and property market? Yeah, so invariably you, you're going to have um, people that sit in one of the two camps. Um, simply because they've seen property as, as possibly the, the safest bet because mm. it's bricks and mortar. Um, but then, you know, you, you have a look and since the early 80s, the financial markets have probably delivered a similar return to the value of the increase in property prices. So you need to look at it from a, from a very personal s scenario. Um, and you can't say that, that one solution or the other is, is the right one. And what we would always recommend is you, you take a diversified approach to your portfolio. You've got property which, like we say, it goes up in value fairly consistently. The issue is that it's, it's illiquid. Um, you then look at where we are at the moment. You know, with the rise in interest rates, we are, we've already seen a drop in um, market prices for, ha for property this year of around 0.9%. Mm. Um, we're also you know, listening to analysts coming out with, with drops as much as 15 to 30%. When you compare that and overlay that with the financial markets for the year, we've got a similar scenario where you know we, we have seen sort of 13, 15% drops in value. Um, so yeah, you, you, you need to understand where your, um, where your objectives lie. And you can't just sit there and say that one is better than the other. Um, you know, we, we look at things from uh, tax efficient investments, you know, VCTs, EIS type investments. We look at pensions. Everybody knows that pensions, what pensions do historically and, and traditionally, but also they're a fantastic inheritance tax vehicle. Mm. Um, you can invest in properties through those. Uh, you know, you, you do have the option of, of commercial property um, and obviously using uh, t certain types of pensions, you can loan money to businesses to, to make residential property purchases. So there is there is scope there to to appeal to both investors and um, property, um, in, well, traditional investors and property investors. Mm. Um, so yes, yeah, so you know it, it's it's about making sure that you you don't throw and, and place all of your eggs in one basket and you just make sure that your your portfolio is as, as diversified as it can possibly be. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, in terms of obviously, you know, Acuity serve a huge amount of um, clients at the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, give us a solution. So somebody new coming to you, um, you know, what would be the process? Would it be a sort of consultation and then meeting various, you know, other members of the team? I mean, what would be a typical first time meeting, you know, with, with a land yeah. investor okay. needs advice? So absolutely, you know, the, the first time contact is made. Obviously, you, you're going to make contact with somebody who either has been referred um, or just by nature of the inquiry that you've yeah. made. Now, the, 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 the benefit of having a business like Acuity in, in the fact that we are very integrated, then we can pull on the expertise across the business. And essentially, the, the job is to sit there and, and take time to fully understand the individual, what they're trying to achieve, what their objectives are, where their possible concerns and, and their pain points might exist, and making sure then that you build a plan for them 
that can pull on um, not just our, your own individual expertise, but introduce them to the wider, the wider business to give them a, a fully holistic solution. Okay, well that's, that's really, really good advice. Thank you so much for joining us today. No and um, I think I'm gonna be joined now with your um, other colleague, Alexi. And, um, and yeah, and we'll be seeing you a little bit later on. So thank you very much for Excellent. your time today. No problem at all. All right, take care. Thanks Bye -bye. a lot. So I'm now delighted to welcome Alexi Kumar from Acti. And Alexi, your position within the company is financial planner and mortgage specialist. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Brilliant. So you've been with Acuity how long? Approximately two and a half years, I think. Yeah. So huge changes in that two and a half years in the marketplace. Very huge changes. Very. Yeah. I sort of joined, I think, at the sort of beginning end of COVID. So sort of experienced all market fluctuations in that period. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. There was certainly some challenges there for sure. Um, so what we've asked, sort of, we've had from sort of Phil and Joe um, and Stu, and they're obviously their various sort of um, expertise within the organisation. And I thought. Obviously, being financial planner and mortgage specialist, um, for, from our audience point of view, Alexi, you know, question for you um, is: with more landlords considering the incorporation route, you know, what additional non-property specific benefits are there to having a corporate structure? Okay, um, so it's a very good question because. Landlords want to go into corporate structure, want to always make sure that not only just benefiting their portfolio and their properties, that there are actual some additional outside wider benefits, I guess. But I think the main thing boils down to tax planning and tax efficiency. Once you're in a corporate structure, it opens up many avenues for you to become more tax efficient. I think one of the main ones for myself would be the income flexibility mm -hmm. in terms of tax planning. So once you get your rental income within a limited company, you now have the benefits of now being able to dictate how much income you take, as and when you take it, whether you leave it in the limited company and park it or invest it, it now becomes more flexible. So for example, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, you wouldn't be paying the 40% tax on income, you'd pay the 90% corporation tax and can park that in the limited company for either later use or to take as dividends later down the line in retirement. Um, which is the key part because I feel a lot of portfolio landlords want to mm. use this portfolio for their retirement planning. That's yeah. sort of their, their ticket out. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Um, and I guess leading on to that, with income being in the limited company, you can now do much more tax efficient pension contributions, mm. which is something a lot of landlords don't typically look at because again, their properties is their retirement, it is their, it is their portfolio. Um, so within the limited company, you can now make pension contributions, which becomes much more tax efficient because it isn't linked to your income. It isn't linked to how much income you're earning within right. the company. Mm -hmm. I think the next thing that I would say that really does help the tax efficiency of having a corporate structure would be the protection side of things. It's much easier to protect assets within a corporate environment rather than under individual ownership. So once you have a corporate structure, you can look at protection such as relevant life or key man and so on to basically help protect those assets that should anything happen to you or any other, or the other directors, that portfolio is now safe and potentially can be mortgage free. Mm, okay. And then to bring back to the tax efficiency side of things, we're looking at more deductible expenses for the, for the business so it can really work out well. Okay. I think those would be the main points and to echo what Phil said earlier, tax planning, inheritance tax planning. It's much easier to do inheritance planning with shares rather than bricks and mortar. So being within the structure, you can bring in family members and start to distribute wealth quite effectively. Okay. Yeah, so I think there's, that's, that's um, I know I've spoken to quite a few of our sort of contacts and even friends and family recently that are doing exactly that and, you know, maybe going down that road where, you know, they've got their children and they're, they're mm. getting a certain amount of shares and then, you know, that, that they're kind of going down that road. It seems to be quite a sensible approach, you know, for, for, you know, for the savings later on. I mean, can you give us a really, um, obviously without naming a client's name, but, <laughs> you know, a, a sort of quite a simple um, case study that maybe how you've helped somebody and, and you know, the sort of um, in terms of going from a non-structured non to a structured and what sort of potential savings that that's, you know, that's helped that client. Okay. Um... Certainly going to have to be sort of as um, brief or abstract as possible. Yeah, of course. Um, but I guess one of the most recent cases that I've been working on is a client who's got approximately 15 
properties, £2 million worth of equity. So should they be hit with inheritance tax charge, that's going to be a fairly chunky portion of their mm. wealth gone, meaning their um, children would have to sell off the portfolio. Yeah. So one way we've been able to help mitigate this is via incorporating, um, using various sections and reliefs into the limited company, and then we can do shared distribution within the limited company at a, at a very basic level, meaning we can now start to bring children in as directors, providing yeah. they're above the age of 18, yeah. distribute and allocate shares to them and make them have growth shares, for example, and put a pause on the parent shares. So their shares stop growing and only the children's will. And again, that's very okay. effectively passing wealth down. Yeah, that's, 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 it's good to know. And um, it seems like a sensible option. I mean, obviously, in the complete ever-changing landscape, one of the big things, you know, at the moment is um, sort of environmental issues. But I mean, do you see any environmental changes affecting the landlord market, you know, coming, coming towards us? Okay, that's a very interesting question. I think it's very topical for everybody in every sector right now is looking at the environment. Um, lenders especially is something they've been doing, I think, quite... It's been really at the forefront of a lot of lenders for, I'll say, two years or so now. Um, but in particularly, in, in the last year, lenders have been rewarding landlords with an energy certificate rating mm -hmm. um, of a C or above. So I know some lenders specifically that have decreased interest rates by an entire percent for landlords that have properties ab above a C. So oh, wow. either C, B or A. Okay. So we're looking at quite significant rewards. Now, what that means for the property sector and the landlord sector is quite huge because it's estimated that to get all the properties up to a C rating minimum, it's going to cost 16 billion. You know, where land's going to find 16 yeah. billion across the market. It's going to be of one way, and that's to raise money via, via the equity. And if not, come 2025, I believe the date is set for, there's going to be penalties for any properties that aren't, aren't that rating. So I think we're going to see a massive shift into properties becoming more energy efficient to make sort of, I guess, uh, more environmental benefits. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that space changes and whether these rewards are still around in 2025, if it's, if it's the norm. Yeah, of course. That's been really insightful, Alexi. Thank you so much um, you know, for giving us your um, expertise today and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much. No worries, pleasure. Thank you. So I'm now joined back um, to end the interview, really, with Phil Bryant, who is Head of Financial Planning and Acuity. Um, Phil, we've met various of team members today, and it's been really, really insightful. Um, obviously, from what Acuity offers is you know, a complete solution by the sounds of things from what I've taken from today's interview. Uh, I mean, we've covered everything from inheritance tax to corporation to environmental to mortgages. So, you know, there's, there's, there's been a huge amount that I think um, people really get a lot from. I mean, the last question really that we haven't sort of touched on that I thought might be quite relevant for yourself is um, what other property related planning is available that could add value to landlords that is not commonly known? Um, it was a very good question. I'm glad the team have been insightful and helpful today. Yeah. I was pleased to hear that. Um, because we've got quite a lot of experience of, of dealing with a number of different landlords and, and different planning within that um, remit, it tends to be the more um, obscure areas of planning that we can assist with in terms of some of the structures that we can establish. People don't necessarily realise that they can put their car through a company whereas they can't obviously do that in the same tax efficient way through a, a private ownership. Um, we can look at stamp duty tax reclaim if there's been a scenario where someone has paid too much tax. Uh, we can actually investigate that and go back and uh, potentially get a reclaim for them in the, under certain circumstances. There's a, a number of clients that we work with who can create finance for landlords so they can receive 12 months or up to 12 months worth of rent up front to help in a cash flow scenario. Okay. Um, so there's different things that we can look at um, that can assist and, and really complement the landlord advice that we can provide. Um, tax um, efficient extraction of, of income. Um, we can look at succession planning so they can actually pass their um, very precious properties to different generations and do so in a, an efficient way. So there's there's num the number of kind of 
less tangible and less obvious things that can really add value to the to the landlord and form part of the kind of rich tapestry of advice that we can uh, provide them to make sure that they're doing all that they can to uh, really make the most of the reliefs and the and the scenarios that are available to them because I think most landlords probably feel ever so slightly picked on mm. recently um, that kind of middle England demographic um, yeah. is carrying the can or appears to be carrying the can in a lot of different scenarios so we always look to try and rebalance things uh, as best as we uh, possibly can and make them as efficient and, uh, and as effective as possible for our landlord community. Okay, well that's that's really good to know that there is a huge amount of the benefits out there that obviously I don't think yeah a lot of people would know about until you start investigating it. Um, but Phil, it's been an absolute pleasure you know, having you and the team in today. Obviously, as I said earlier, you guys you know, exhibit most of our shows and you hold seminars on a regular basis. But I know obviously your website is quite informative and we may look at putting a couple of small extra videos just on the end here with different um, areas of advice or point out different areas of the website that might not necessarily be obvious um, to, to a landlord when they're, you know, when they're looking at that website initially. And I think I covered it off with, um, I think it was Joe in terms of, you know, the sort of, it seems like quite a consultive approach um, with how you deal with things. And obviously every landlord is completely different from, you know, a very, you know, one to three properties, maybe up to however many properties and all on a different journey at those different times and require different specialist elements, which I think acuity, um, you know, that's what you seem to specialise in. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, we, we try and do exactly that. There's, it's interesting really kind of the, the property side of, uh, of the advice that we offer because you're right, no two landlord scenarios are the same, but there's certain traits that we can, that we can pick up and, and we can actually employ the experience that we've got from dealing with uh, others in a fairly similar situation to make sure that whenever we advise a client, it's very much a path well trodden. Uh, and that helps the client feel um, secure and that they've been you know, very robustly advised uh, because of the experience that we've got. And all of the consultations that we offer, um, there's no charge associated with any of the, uh, the initial consultations. And any time that we do implement any advice, it's all made very, very clear. And uh, it, the benefit for, for actually undertaking that advice is, uh, is written out to the client. So you're right, no two situations are the same, but due to the experience that we've got, we're very good at identifying the areas in which we can add some value. Okay, wonderful. Well, I think, guys, you know, that sort of sums it all up for today. And um, it's been a wealth of advice from the team here at Acuity. And Phil, just please tell us how, you know, how our viewers can get in touch with you if they want to sort of take advantage of that free consultation. Um, is there a number that they can call or we can put it on the screen maybe now? So we'll actually do that for you. But if you could maybe just reference your, your website as mm -hmm. well, Phil, that'd be great. Yeah, the website is very informative uh, and it's got all the details of the team on, on there and how they can uh, be contacted. And that's www.acuityprofessional.com. Okay, well, thanks ever so much, guys, and I look to look forward to bringing you um, the next episode of Landlord Investor Hour, and I hope you get great value out of today's um, interview with Acuity.